Hey everybody, I want to start today with a question for you. If you, if I ask you, what are the two biggest desires in our hearts? What would you say? What would be the first thing that comes to mind when you think of your desire? What do you want in life? I, I think the two biggest desires are one, we want to belong. We want to have a place where we are known and we belong with people. Uh, and I think the second thing is that we want to have a purpose. We want there to be a mission that we can fulfill in life. And I believe that the Christian life offers the two best answers to those questions. But I think Peter does in this passage we're going to read today. So we are in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And I'm going to read that passage for us now and then talk a little bit. So 1 Peter 2, 1 through 10. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, desire the pure milk of the word, so that you may grow up into your salvation, if you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by people, but chosen and honored by God, you yourselves, as living stones, a, spirit, a spiritual house, are being built to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and honored cornerstone, and the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. So honor will come to you who believe, but for the unbelieving, the stone that the builders rejected, this one has become the cornerstone, and a stone to stumble over, and a rock to trip over. They stumble because they disobey the word, they were destined for this. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. I think in this passage, Peter gives us a what, something to do, but he also gives us a why, why do we do that? And so he starts in verse one, rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all slander. Now I don't have time to unpack what all of those words mean, but if I could summarize it, I would say, get rid of all evil talk and thought you have with one another. Uh, that's, a, that's a really hard, task. That's a really hard ask of, of Peter to say, get rid of all of that. All of the envy, all of the negative thoughts, all of the complaining and grumbling you have against your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, get rid of it. And if you're like me, I don't like to be told what to do and then receive an answer because I said so. Like, take out the trash, why? Because I said so. I hated that as a kid. I wanted to know why. Why am I doing what you're asking me to do? And I think Peter knows that. People don't respond well when they're just told what to do, or in this case, what not to do. So Peter gives them a why. Peter gives them a reason why you should not slander and be malicious and be envious of each other. And his reason is found throughout the rest of this passage. We are being built together in Christ. We are being built as a building, as, a, as one, as one unit, a body of believers. And we can't hate each other. We can't slander each other. We can't be envious of each other if we are being united in that. That's not what families do. Or as Jesus says in the Gospels, a house divided cannot stand. And so if, if we are being built together, we cannot be envious, slanderous, uh, or, or evil to one another. But I think Peter gives a clearer understanding in verse 9. He says, you are a chosen race. Now I know that as students, you hear the word chosen and you, you, your radars go off, you freak out, you don't know what to think. I just want you to know this word is meant to be a comfort. You were chosen when God looked at humanity and looked upon you, he wanted you. You were not an accident. If you put your faith in Jesus, you did not do that by accident. God desired you you. God chose you. And that's meant to be a comforting thing. But it's not just you. It's not a singular you in verse 9. It's a plural. We were chosen by God. We have been chosen. We have been desired 
by God, but we're not just a chosen race. We're a royal priesthood. We are, we no longer need a, another priesthood to connect us with God. The priests in the Old Testament were people that would be the connecting point for common folk. They would be the, the people that would go before God on behalf of others. We are a royal priesthood through Christ. Jesus Christ has reunited us with the Father. He has given us connection with him, and now we have unity with him. We no longer have to go to a priest to pray for us, though it is good for ministers and pastors to pray for you. We have connection with God through Christ. We are that. We are also a holy nation. We are chosen by God. We are a royal priesthood, and we are a people that have been made holy. God has set us apart and is sanctifying us, making us uh, look like his son. That is who we are. And, and it's not just you. It's not just one person. We are a body of believers who are called by God. So if you desire community, if you desire a place to belong, uh, God offers that to us through Christ. Through faith in him, through faith in his death, burial, and resurrection, we can be a people united together in a community that will never end. And if you desire purpose, uh, Peter gives us that purpose also so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We can belong to a community that will never end, and we have a mission to proclaim the praises of God, to preach the gospel, and that mission is far greater than any mission uh, in, in life. So if you, if you desire community, if you desire purpose, come to Jesus. He offers both. Well, students, welcome. Uh, first off, Evan, fantastic work. Thanks, Thank you for sharing uh, just an awesome truth uh, from our brother Peter and just really clear to what it means to know that we belong and that we have a purpose. And uh, I think about my time. One of the biggest reasons I think, Evan, uh, one of the ways that we feel we most belong is when people give us things. Because that's like, they know us. Yeah. They, it was a gift that, you know, we either it's part of our passions or our desires and all of that. I just turned 30, by the way. So, yeah, you can bow your head. And Some Mac. F's in the chat for my boy Mac. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> just turned 30. And my wife surprised me with the coolest birthday party uh, where she flew me uh, to see my family, which I had no idea was going to gather all together. Uh, because a huge desire of my heart is to know that I belong and that I have people that are going to rally around. So that was as I went into a crazy time of turning into, going into a new decade, I was able to feel like I'm most belong. So if you're with us, what are those, what's that one birthday gift or one gift where you are like, man, that was something that I realized that I am known and I belong. For you, what could that be? Oh, is, man. There a, is there a story or a thing that you felt like, man, I was seen, I knew I belong and all of that? Yeah, I... I am trying to think about that. I really don't know. That's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, totally fine. I, what, what makes me feel like I belong is when people, uh, when I would just have an event like that where, where people invite me over and I've got family around me, I've got mm -hmm. friends that are there just to be with me and just to make me feel like I belong with them, I'm loved, and it doesn't have to be a gift involved, just to be with people that love me. Um, that is the gift. So. Awesome. That's really good. I think a part of our life, what Evan said, was really important students to check in real quick is that we have to get rid of evil talk, that we're called to build each other up. Just as we love family, it's a desire of our heart. Families, when we get together, we can talk frankly, but we know that there is an end goal, that we're all on the same page, that we're gonna build each other up because we of our love for each other. The same can be said of us as we follow Jesus. We are part of the body of Christ, this royal priesthood, as the scripture talks about, where we're called to build each other up. Evan, I don't know about you, but in this time, it seems like we are polarized. There's a lot of picking sides yep. right now. So how would you recommend that we build each other up? That even though our differences may be very apparent, how do we recognize that we're all in the same team? Yeah, no, that's good. I, um, I think that we, we're, we're sometimes good at this. We're, we, we are prone to be passive um, encouragers and so we we won't do negative things we won't like we will do what Peter is saying we won't envy each other we won't slander each other we're if we're good at one of these things we're good at that one we're not as good when we are trying to be active in our encouragement so when we are trying to actively encourage or be gentle with people be gracious 
be uh, exhorting, calling out uh, maybe issues in life, or maybe just pushing them toward godliness and loving their neighbors. We're not as good at that, but we really need to be more focused on what can we actively do? How can we be gentle with our friends? How can we be kind when they've had horrible days or they, they look down or maybe they, they, look, they seem fine, but you want to be encouraging anyway. You want to give them maybe a word from scripture, maybe just let them know that you're praying for them. Maybe just speak to them in a gentle tone and to not be harsh or angry, but to be calm and kind. I think those things, those tangible, active ways of encouraging uh, can, can go a long way in building up the body together. That's awesome. That's really cool. I think what, it, what Evan said is really, really important for us. We, they have to know our life, right? We can't just come to people and give this active criticism or this shallow praise because then it can seem disjointed. It can seem that we're not unified. So we have to do life with people. We have to get outside of our comfort zones, even getting to know people who are different than us. Because I truly believe a unit, unified, united body, this priesthood, this chosen people as we're called to be, we can do so much more for the kingdom of God, of loving God and loving our neighbor when we're all in the same playing field, actively encouraging, yeah. actively getting constructive criticism. And because then we can better ourselves, we can sharpen this iron with each other so that people can know that we love and follow Jesus. Yeah. And so may that be an encouragement to you today. May you see who you are in Christ. It doesn't matter your background, past, doesn't matter what you've done, that God loves you and is calling you to a purpose to love Him, to love others, and to make His name known. Yeah. Lock shields together, Evan. Yeah, I'm going to lock shields with you. We're going to lock shields together as a church in Middle Tennessee as we work together with the global church so that people can know who Jesus is. So have a great week. We'll see you guys. See you guys.